gonna go across to the sister island of Tobago because we're gonna find out all about World Wildlife Day and what they are doing across there uh, as pertains to this observance. With me this morning is Roy Corbin, founder of Corbin Local Wildlife Park, and he's also a member of the Wildlife Association of Tobago, as well as Ketura Samuel, who's a volunteer at Corbin's Wildlife Park. Good morning and welcome. Good morning. Good morning, morning. <laughs> yes, thank you for joining us this morning. So happy World Wildlife Day, first and foremost. Thank you, and same to the rest of well, Trinidad and Tobago. Yes, that's right. You know, and as uh, we showed a clip earlier from the UN about World Wildlife Day and the importance of uh, us as a human race conserving wildlife, all the flora and fauna, because again, it's so intertwined with our own existence that, um, you know, it's, it's very key that we t play a part, a key role in preserving it to ensure that, you know, the life on Earth on the whole could be preserved. Uh, what are you doing over in Tobago, uh, more specifically at Corbin's uh, local wildlife park to observe this day? Okay, at Corbin local wildlife park, we have an active breeding and release program where we are able to get all the local Tobago animals breeding and we introduce back all those young ones back into the wild. Definitely. And uh, you yourself, Roy, you have been uh, a hunter for a number of years. But, uh, you know, what took you from being a hunter to being a wildlife protector? Well, before my eyes, I realized the animals were disappearing very fast. So I decided to make that drastic change from hunter to protector and educator. And educator as well, because, again, education is key. Yeah, because we, we have a, a lot of the schools come to us now. So we're able to give that information to the kids about our fauna and flora and how important it is. You know, and uh, the hunting season has just closed. It closed on uh, March 1st, and it will be closed until uh, the end of September. Um, but, you know, yeah. there, there are those who may go outside of the law and outside of the regulations. You know, what um, can we do as a public to, you know, try to raise awareness that, hey, uh, you know, the hunting season is closed? And how, how can we help in that regard? Well, uh, we, we can get in touch once we see that activity taking place with the forestry department, and they will take it from there. Uh, also, as your experience as a hunter, um, are there sustainable ways in which hunting can be done, um, you know, to still, you know, while still being, still hunting for prey and whatever, uh, are there sustainable ways in which uh, the wildlife can be hunted but still conserved to some degree? Yes, I think the whole thing about it is education. I think we are still ignorant of a, about a lot of things. So I think if we make that effort to educate the public, it would work. I want to bring Ketura into the conversation. Ketura, you're a volunteer at Corbin's a local wildlife park. Um, what has your experience been there thus far? Honestly, it has been so enlightening getting to interact with locals and tourists alike and just sharing the education education and doing outreach about how important wildlife is. I've seen it in my personal life, teaching my friends and families about why it is you shouldn't have monkeys as pets, for example, and just because you see a snake, it's more afraid of you than you are of it. So just general things like that right. um, it really has been enlightening because I love plants and animals and just trying to conserve the local flora and fauna that's our ultimate goal. If there were some young viewers, you know, especially children, because, you know, these um, bits of education, it is more effective when you start teaching them from young. What would be some of the, let's say, three main points you would tell a very young viewer this morning? Okay, so for example, when it is you go into the forest, right, you have to remember you are in the animal's home. So a lot of the times when you see these wildlife, just please leave them alone. Leave them alone. That's all I'm asking, just leave them alone. <laughs> Um, another tip I would give young persons would be to, if it is that you see some of these animals, especially in your homes and whatnot, please try to call the relevant authorities within Trinidad and Tobago. There are a lot of wildlife rehabilitators, um, Corbin, for example. So we would come a lot of the times and take the animals out of the situation to avoid killing them. And my third tip would just be to just continue to spread the education. What it is you learn, try to tell your friends and pass on the word from them and then pass it on to them. So the more people we reach, the better chance we have of conserving our wildlife. Oh, that is fantastic, Ketura. 
And um, Roy, as you were saying earlier, you are involved in rehabilitation of animals as well. Uh, what type of um, rehabilitation do you engage in? You know, is it uh, abused or injured animals? Uh, what is it exactly? I, I, I didn't get you there. Uh, when you said you engage in the rehabilitation of animals as well, uh, what type of rehabilitation is it? Would it be that of um, maybe abused animals or anim like wild animals that had been put into captivity illegally and stuff like that? Uh, what, what type of rehabilitation? Okay, we take in all animals. Not domesticated animals, they have to be wild animals. Whether they are damaged, whether they were pets, whether, no matter what's wrong with the animal, once you can't handle it anymore, they come to us. If they are damaged any part of the island, we get calls, we go collect those animals. We try our best to get them back to perfect health and we, we have to take them back again into the wild. And um, as pertains to the breeding, you said you are really involved in the local animals. Uh, what type of diversity yeah. is there in the park? Excuse? What type of diversity, animal diversity, is there in your park, in, in the Corbin Wildlife Park? Well, we usually <laughs> specialize in our local species, um, usually endemic to Tobago. So we try our best to keep it local because a lot of the um, exotic species come and they kill our local wildlife. So yeah. we really try to rehabilitate, especially like opossums. Right now we're trying to get a program to start breeding ocelots back into Tobago. So we're really trying to focus on Tobago wildlife. Oh, uh, you mentioned ocelots. How um, prevalent is the uh, population of ocelots there? Practically non-existent really? in Tobago. Um, yes, unfortunately. We have a meal at the park. And right now we're trying to do some in engagements with Trinidad to see if we can get a female to start breeding on the island once again. Okay, because um, again, ocelots uh, in Trinidad are you know, really hard to come by as well. Um, from your experience yep. in the past, Roy, uh, would you have seen or come across ocelots during your time as a hunter? No, they have disappeared from Tobago long before my time. Wow. So they were not around in my time. So it's been as a kid growing quite up. A while. No. Yeah, I think uh, way back maybe in the late 50s, they may be somewhere around here. Wow. So yeah, um, it's a it's, uh, population yeah. that's really, really on the brink of, of completely disappearing from Tobago. And you know, programs like yours that seek to breed and reintroduce them into the wild uh, would definitely benefit yeah. uh, you know, the, the animals themselves and the ecology of Tobago, so to say. Yeah, so we, what a lot of people don't know that those animals, they were apex predators here. So because those animals have disappeared from the island, we're having a lot of problem with the prey. So like coquicos and parrots and the animals that are distressing farmers. Right. Those predators were the ones that would keep those guys in check. So would you say overhunting had been the problem why they have pretty much disappeared from Tobago? You hit the hammer on the nail there, man. Yeah. <laughs> so yes, overhunting is doing a, a lot of damage to our animal population on the island, wildlife in particular. And how would we, um, how would you address or how would the authorities address overhunting? Because again, we do have a uh, hunting season, which is for a specific amount of time. But oftentimes, you know, we still see uh, people hunting outside of those seasons. Uh, how, would, how do you suggest the authorities address that issue? Well, I think it cries manpower. So I think there are a lot of unemployed young people out there that need jobs. Why not employ some more manpower so they can police the environment properly. All right, and yeah, that could be one solution. And uh, we do hope that, you know, things would uh, become bolstered, you know, that service and, and that uh, conservation would become bolstered over time as uh, movements like yours and uh, you being also a member of the uh, Wildlife Association of Tobago, hopefully you could give voice to issues like that and more as pertains to conserving wildlife in Tobago. All right, well, I want to thank you both for joining us this morning. I have been chatting with Roy Corbin, founder of Corbin Local Wildlife Park, who is also a member of the Wildlife Association of Tobago. I've also been chatting with Keturah Samuel, who's a volunteer of the same, 
And I want to thank you for joining us this morning. And uh, again, wish you a happy World Wildlife Day.